Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Before we start, I would like to draw your attention to what I can offer you as a master coach. I can help you to focus on your why with clarity, uniting your passion with your purpose with a plan to create the life you truly desire. Book a free 20-minute coaching call right now via calendly.com forward slash Amy Rowlandson forward slash call and we can take it from there. Hello and welcome to Reflections with Actions with me, Amy Rowlandson. And if you're a new listener, hello, lovely to have you here. And let me explain what these episodes are all about. Reflections with Actions are where I have the pleasure of reflecting on the last five episodes, choosing particular moments to share with you. Moments we might not have explored fully within the episode themselves, simply because there wasn't enough time or it wasn't appropriate to do so in the interview with my guest. And one of the reasons that people love Focus on Why is that I listen to my guests without judgment or bias. I don't interrupt them or dive in and share my own experiences, which could in some way undermine or detract from what has been shared in the conversation in any way at that time. It's important to me that I shine the light fully on my guests in those conversations. So these Reflections episodes give me the opportunity to share my thoughts, insights and stories with you in this separate space. And it's worked really well as a concept, so much so that guests in the audience comment on this all the time. So let's dive straight in with my first reflection of today, episode 257, Women of a Certain Stage with Lauren Chiron. Believing that she was suffering from early onset dementia in her early 40s, Lauren left her senior role in financial services. Imagine her surprise when her doctor later informed her that she had just been through menopause. Today, Lauren educates employers on why being menopause supportive is business savvy and in sharing her knowledge, she stimulates a debate on what being well means at all stages of life. Supporting high performing women to successfully navigate their menopause with insightful directness, commercial pragmatism and absolute passion for ensuring optimum well-being and resilience, Lauren is championing women of a certain stage. As a trusted coach, mentor and a keynote speaker on executive women's well-being and as an authority of menopause at work, Lauren has helped thousands of executives, celebrities and athletes globally. She holds qualifications in psychology, mental health, nutrition, coaching, personal training and more. And Lauren stated that her purpose behind her work is to make sure no one else goes through what I did and that every single woman has access to the right knowledge and the right support so she can step into her personal power, boost her vitality and increase her influence at home and work and beyond. For Lauren, the big picture is for women to be as au fait with menopause as they are with periods, to absolutely know how to help themselves and others. For all of our medical teams to either know directly how to support someone through menopause or be able to accurately signpost and the same for employers. Are you aware of the effects of menopause on women of a certain stage? Lauren says over 86% of women neither know what menopause is nor how it may impact them. And despite being of this certain stage in life myself, I've still a lot to learn about my own body. In fact, I was curious to hear the result of a poll that Lauren is running right now on LinkedIn, which at the time of recording, it had 79% saying that they believe less than 15% of women know what peri to postmenopause is and how it will affect them. That's a crazy numbers. Those statistics are insane. In a world where we now have more access to information than ever, how can this still be the case? It's staggering, really. But sadly, it is the case. And Lauren's business was founded because neither she nor her firm recognise the signs and symptoms of menopause. 2022 is the eighth year of business for women of a certain stage for Lauren, which started out simply as a Facebook page and has now grown to become a globally recognised brand that educates people on menopause through the media, on stage and in corporate workplace training. Women of a Certain Stage provides executive mentoring and coaching 
for all life transitions, recognising that when you nurture your physical and mental health, your personal and professional performance is enhanced. In one of Lauren's recent newsletters, she says, can you imagine if we allowed our daughters to stumble into puberty without telling them about periods or not being there for them to help chat about the changes their bodies are going through and the emotions that are coursing through their minds? It's just as important to arm ourselves with a knowledge of what happens during menopause where hormones are shifting just as they are in puberty. Estrogen levels are fluctuating and often rapidly. Oestrogen, progesterone and testosterone play a huge role in how our bodies work, how we feel and behave. Together they're instrumental in how our skin, nails and hair are produced, how we focus and concentrate and our heart and bone health. And this is only the tip of the iceberg, Lauren says. Menopause is entirely manageable and suffering is optional. And the reflection I want to pick up on particularly is that of the celebration of a label. I've spoken before about the impact labels have and how they often have negative connotations. However, in this case, Lauren celebrated the label of menopause because of what it represented, but also because of what it did not represent. She thought she had had early onset dementia. And when she realised it was simply a natural stage of her body's biological evolution, the relief was huge. In this case, the label of menopause is of assistance in our understanding of what is happening to the body and then being able to manage the symptoms. The key is knowing that what you're going through or someone you know is going through is in effect menopause and not, as Lauren said, something else or, as Lauren thought, dementia. Step into your own personal power. Wear the badge of honour and own the stage of life you're in, Lauren said, Because with education comes power. With power and knowledge means that you've got a choice. And if you've got a choice, then you can decide how you're going to tackle this phase of life. I learned from Lauren that menopause is in fact a single moment, a day, and it marks the date of your last ever period. And yet menopause is often used to describe what I now know to be perimenopause, menopause and postmenopause. So armed with this knowledge that Lauren shared, I'm now more in tune with what's going on with my body. And in sharing this episode on Focus on Why, I'm shining the light on what is happening to women at a certain stage in their lives and make it as easy a life transition as possible. So please share this episode, episode 257, with as many people as you think will benefit from hearing what Lauren has to share about the education of this life stage for women going through menopause. Next up is episode 258, Building on Solid Foundations with Dan Hulbert. Everybody's purpose journey is different. Dan's why is focused on his values of how to practically work on yourself using self-mastery, self-development and self-awareness. Dan's vision is to help people turn their property knowledge into practical experience, allowing them to find the right property path to give them the desired results. With over 20 years of practical experience in the property and construction industries, Dan's passion and purpose is building on solid foundations. He's a property investor, mentor and consultant. He's built a solid property portfolio by himself and with business partners of which they own, control or manage over a thousand properties across the UK. And if you didn't realise, Dan and I used to be business partners. We ran a property network event in Gravesend and training business, educating people on practical property investing. We also started a podcast together. It's called the Property Vault Podcast. And in fact, despite not adding to the 64 episodes for almost two years now, it's still featuring in the Apple Podcast top charts It's across several countries. Last time I checked, it was in Tunisia, South Africa and Great Britain. That is the beauty of the podcasting medium, that it has a really long shelf life and it's an asset that can be accessed 24-7 globally. But at the beginning of lockdown in 2020, after a long discussion, Dan and I parted ways in business and Focus on Why was born as a result of that door closing. In many ways, I'm so grateful for that being the case, as otherwise this show might not even have existed and all the incredible stories that I've shared would not have been shared at all. To be honest, I'm not sure why it took as long as it did to get Dan on to focus on why. Perhaps it was a subconscious decision for both of us just to not confuse the branding and be on one another's podcasts together again for a little while at least. It's funny how life has its twists and turns, some unexpected, just as this was at the time. 
Anyway, we've since both gone in very different directions over the last two years, but remained friends during the time. It was a lot of fun recording this episode together with Dan. He's a very spiritual person and has been working on his own personal development for many years now. He quoted Jim Rohn, as he often does, one of his favourites, saying, don't let your education become just knowledge. Make sure you apply the knowledge so you get some practical wisdom. Dan said he thinks you can get all the knowledge you want in the world, but knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is. And just as Lauren said that with education comes knowledge, power and choice, Anton Chekhov also said that knowledge is of no value unless you push it into practice. And that is why these Reflections with Actions episodes are here to encourage you to take action as a result of tuning in. Don't just listen to the podcast and say, oh, that was interesting, fascinating, inspiring, motivating, whatever, and go back to your day. Think about what specific action you will take as a result of tuning in and then take it. And share with me what you've done once you've taken that action. I want to hear how Focus on Why has added value to your life. Now, Dan shared a couple of book recommendations. The first was The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, which is quite possibly one of my favourite ever books. Captivating and yet so simple in its message. A message which spoke to me personally and judging by its success has also spoken to many other millions of hearts and minds across the world. Through a combination of its magic, mysticism, wisdom and wonder, The Alchemist has transformed the lives of many people across the world. And it's a book about self-discovery, a book about an Andalusian shepherd boy who decides to travel the world in search of his worldly treasure. The wisdom that's shared in here is a beautiful one. And most importantly, the message is to follow our dreams. The second book that Dan shared was The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma, a book that I'd not read before we'd recorded. However, I have done since. Another fable about fulfilling your dreams and reaching your destiny. And this story is of a lawyer forced to confront the spiritual crisis of his out of balance life. And the subsequent wisdom that he gains takes him on a journey and to create a life of passion, of purpose and of peace. Again, like The Alchemist, it is a blend of Eastern and Western philosophy with key learnings all around purpose. And Dan said that it was a book that he often picks up and revisits. I can understand why, because at the end of seven of the chapters, there is an action summary with a key symbol, a virtue, some wisdom, techniques and a quotable quote. All actionable elements that you can apply. And here is one of those quotable quotes from the book. The most noble thing you can do is to give to others. Start focusing on your higher purpose. The message is clear. Focus on why is what it's saying. Dan has spent years focusing on self-mastery, self-development and self-awareness, so much so that they have become his guiding principles, his core values in life. And so much so that they've even become the name of his brand. That's where the principle of building on solid foundations comes from, because it's about having the right mindset and the clarity of what your vision is and what you want to do and your why obviously being part of that. Then having the right plan to move forward and taking the right actions because the how will come. This is what Dan believes now. Are you building on solid foundations? Are you focusing on your higher purpose? Are you perhaps heading towards joy? just as Liz Allen is in episode 259. A lifelong love for learning has meant a roller coaster journey through the varied worlds of language, quantum physics, neuroscience, psychology, epigenetics, biology, sociology and nutrition and has brought Liz Allen to her purpose-driven focus today, that of the pregnant pause. Throughout recent years, Liz has a singular focus that no matter where her paths along her journey have taken her, she will always be heading towards joy. She realised that she had to get a grip of the dialogue that was going on in her head, her self-talk, so she wrote herself a little script which was all about heading towards joy. But what does heading towards joy mean? One of the lessons that Robin Sharma shares in The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari was never to put off happiness for the sake of achievement. To never put off the things that are important for your well-being and satisfaction for to a later time. Joy, fulfilment and happiness are not places or destinations that you need to reach. They are states that you choose to be in along the journey. Live in the moment. Be present. 
carpe diem. Practice gratitude for what you have. Liz said that her parents taught her to have fun and to live in the moment because next week's not guaranteed. Our length of time on this planet is never guaranteed. So enjoy the moment. A lesson of true carpe diem indeed. Just as Dan Hulbert spoke of self-mastery being the key to his purpose and fulfillment, so it is that you have to work on what's within before you are fully able to give to others. Fulfillment, meaning and contribution are to be found when you're able to give to others in life. However, you cannot pour from an empty cup or as Robin Sharma says, you cannot receive more when your cup is full. Liz was thrilled to announce that she'd done it. What have you done, Liz? I've done it, Amy, because as good old Aristotle says, to understand oneself is the beginning of wisdom. And I just feel like I've been crashing around the world, not understanding myself. But now I do. And I'm only just beginning to start being wise. Here comes the wisdom piece again. Liz said she'd learned at the University of Life through experience, through trial and error. Just as Dan had said he'd learned from his mistakes, so has Liz. So have I. Except we don't call them mistakes. We choose to call them lessons. One book that Liz spoke of is A Chicken Soup for the Soul. Skimming through the book to find the story that Liz referred to, the page opened at a poignant place. It was Carpe Diem with the title. Alan Cohen's message in the story he shared was of love. That of our well-being is dependent on our giving love. It is not about what comes back. It is about what goes out. A powerful reminder for us all. Chicken Soup for the Soul, a book full of lessons. I found the exact story Liz spoke about. It's called Start With Yourself. If I had only changed myself first, a regret from a deathbed, what would you regret on your deathbed? What would the thought of having no regrets in life inspire, encourage or empower you to change today? One of the co-authors of Chicken Soup for the Soul, Jack Canfield, shared the same stage with my next guest. Episode 260, The Business of Speaking with Steve Lowell. Unsurprising, really, as for 53 years, since the age of six, Steve has been speaking and performing on the live stage. From Ottawa, Canada, Steve is an award-winning global speaker and for over 30 years has been training, mentoring executives, thought leaders and professional speakers around the world to deliver high-impact keynote speeches, drive revenue from the platform and build wealth through speaking. He is a three-time number one international best-selling author and a sought-after expert, helping thought leaders and sales teams sell more by changing the way they speak. Together with his wife, Jane, Steve travels the world speaking, training and mentoring those who have a message to monetize through the spoken word. Along his journey, Steve developed a passion for the speaking community and fell in love with the business of speaking. I also have fallen in love with the business of speaking. Podcasting is my speaking medium of choice. It is how I choose to deliver my message and connect with my audience. However, this week, I was booked to speak in person about how to podcast with purpose and create positive global ripple effects. It was wonderful to be back in the room again, to meet and network with people and to share the positive message that Focus on Why has achieved over the last two years across the podcasting medium. I had many people reach out to me afterwards asking me how to help them with their ideas for purposeful podcasting. Hearing me speak could be the moment that someone was inspired and empowered to take action. And I look forward to seeing them grow their podcast from a single seed, a single idea that they allow to take root, just as I have done with Focus on Why. Steve spoke passionately about his journey to where he was today and how he'd learned to be in service to the speaking industry. He spoke of the moment that he discovered that he had a gift that he didn't even know he had. His gift was that he can take anybody with a message and put them in front of a room or on a stage and pull magic out of them that they never knew existed. He has built a career on that premise because of that one moment. Messes, moments and missions are what Steve understands to be the three primary motivators for entrepreneurs, thought leaders, expert speakers, coaches and authors. What is your primary motivator? Is it a mess? Is it a moment? Or is it a mission? Steve was not expecting to have to think so deeply in the interview with me. I caught him off guard a little, I think. In a good way, though. And that's what happens when you have to focus on why. 
and Steve kindly wrote a review of his experience. He said that this podcast offers such a wide variety of perspectives through a wide range of guests that I find each session offers something new for me to think about. I recognise many of the guests as being colleagues in the professional speaking world and I find it fascinating to understand them at a level I had not previously. I get to know people better through this podcast, but more importantly, as a guest on this podcast, Amy caused me to think deeper about myself through the amazing questions that she asked. I made Steve think, my goodness, did I. Often, we don't take a moment to stop to think. We spoke of the importance of values, as many of the episodes tend to cover together. For Steve, his most important value is freedom. He defines freedom as being able to express things and do things the way his soul tells him is natural to him, the way his gut tells him is natural to him. What does freedom mean to you? Whilst freedom is sought on different levels, physical, emotional, mental, financial, spiritual and social, the very concept of freedom allows for your own unique interpretation. Essentially, there are three types of freedom that capture all levels, the freedom to do, the freedom to be and the freedom from. In Victor E. Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, our ability to choose our reaction under any circumstance is referred to as the last of the human freedoms. Austrian neurologist, psychiatrist, philosopher, author and Holocaust survivor, Frankl says that man is capable of changing the world for the better, if possible, and of changing himself for the better, if necessary. Every human being has the freedom to change at any instant. And this is echoed by French philosopher Albert Camus. Freedom is nothing else but a chance to be better. Evolution of all life focuses on becoming a better version of its previous form. You cannot always control your circumstances. However, you can control your attitude. There is not one singular meaning of your life. You have the freedom to choose your why. It is unique to you and dependent on your decisions, situations and responsibilities. Why do you do what you do? Inevitably, when talking with many of my podcast guests on Focus on Why, everything comes back to the concept of freedom in one form or another as they each speak of their own version of freedom and what it means to them as it has again with Steve Lowell today. For me, freedom is found in doing what I love to do, shining the light on people's purpose. For me, that is my freedom. Have you found freedom or are you still chasing freedom? Remember, you have the freedom to choose what freedom means to you. So choose wisely. Focus on freedom. And in this episode, Steve said, I keep thinking to myself, am I not getting what I want out of life because I'm not helping enough other people get what they want, which means I'm not serving enough? And am I operating in a manner which is inconsistent which, with how I see how I see myself? And then the question comes to my mind, how do I see myself? Then I end up doing this personal audit on my self-image. And this is another reflection I want to pick up on, which is the powerful self-audit that Steve applies to get clarity of the situations he finds himself in. Do you have a personal audit? If so, what are the questions you ask of yourself? Steve takes himself through a series of questions and takes an audit of the circumstances. The first being, what exactly is happening here? Then, what am I feeling about what is happening? Then he asks, what is my measure of responsibility here? Followed by, how can I change what I've done or what I'm doing? Would this self-audit help you in life? If so, what other questions would you add or adapt so it's personal to you? Often, it's simply the case of reframing perspectives, which brings me perfectly to my final reflection today, which is episode 261, Reframing Perspectives with Elisa Wanaconi. Using a trifecta of media, law and politics, Elisa Wanaconi leverages her cinematography and multimedia creative skills to deliver messages and tell stories. Focused on reaching the masses as a visual thinker, Elisa conveys stories of restoration, empathy and healing through the medium of art where words may have previously failed. As a cinematographer and as an advocate for equality and human rights, Elisa has worked in six continents for outlets such as the BBC, Newsweek and National Geographic, covering conflict zones and humanitarian crises. Navigating a kinder world to create a more cohesive society, Elisa's work is all about humanising, human connection and reframing perspectives. 
Elisa realised that every time she travelled to a new country, she would have preconceived notions that had broken down and changed. She's now worked in 50 countries and she's still learning. She finds that reframing and being open to reframing her views is a huge path towards understanding each other and having a more cohesive society. Working in conflict areas with humanitarian crises and with those who have encountered domestic and sexual violence, you would imagine that Lisa's work is dark, yet it is not. As where there is darkness, there is also light. Elisa sees the best and worst of humanity and chooses her art to guide her through life. Art is her platform of choice to re-empower people who have had their power stripped from them one way or another. Elisa's purpose is to reframe justice, to reframe fear, to reframe how people think. Reframing perspectives of the world is a big mission and yet Elisa takes it all in her stride. She believes that if we connect more, we will be navigating that kinder world she dreams of achieving. She said that she feels as though everybody's going around needing a hug these days and we can do that by being a little bit kinder in the way we view things and the way we communicate with each other. Yes, Elisa, we can. What is a hug? What does a hug bring you? Going back to the chicken soup for the soul, another one of the stories that I stumbled upon was called It Can't Happen Here. Quoting Virginia Satir, world-renowned family therapist, saying that we need four hugs a day for survival. We need eight hugs a day for maintenance. We need 12 hugs a day for growth. Really? Wow. Well, what is a hug? It's essentially it's a squeeze. And when we squeeze one another, we apply deep pressure, with, which acts as a calming mechanism and releases the bonding hormone oxytocin, which makes us feel wonderful. Tying back into Liz's message of heading towards joy, a welcome hug will definitely leave you feeling more energized, loved and full of joy. I remember reading an article about the benefits of oxytocin years ago when I was a new mum. I told my son Eddie about how long a hug should be for for both of us to benefit. And if I recall correctly, it was around about 20 seconds. Now, I've since tried to verify this fact with scientifically backed research, but to no avail. However, my own proof over the last 19 years as a mum has definitely endorsed it enough for me to have all the evidence I need. Growing up, Eddie remembered this fact and would always cling on a little longer saying that it had not been long enough. And he still gives me the best hugs today at six foot three. A big parenting win, I'd say. In fact, we had a big celebrating hug last Friday together. And I'll share this special moment with you. Five years ago in year seven, Eddie received Rugby Player of the Year at his school. And again in year eight. Fast forward to year 12. And who would have thought that just 24 weeks after his emergency neurosurgery following his freak rugby accident, he would be chosen to represent his school as the first 15 rugby captain. Whilst recovering from his operation, Eddie passionately supported and coached his teammates from the touchline. He had a strong focus on why. He wanted to play rugby again more than anything. And to see him back on the pitch on the 29th of January, scoring a try on his return was fantastic. To see him be part of the winning team who won the Kent Schools under 18 sevens tournament last week was incredible. And to see him last night at the end of season sports dinner be awarded captain, I have to admit that I shared a few tears. It's been an emotional journey over the last few months. So congratulations, Eddie. It's well deserved. And Dad and I are really proud of you. We're really looking forward to, to you leading the first 15 to much success next rugby season. So after all these reflections with actions today, if the one action you take today is following Elisa's advice to give someone a hug, I'll take that as a big win. Remember, hugs are free, healthy and available to all of us. Who could you hug today to receive one of the best gifts in life you have to give others? Your love. Thank you for listening to Focus on Why with me, Amy Rowlandson. To show your appreciation and to help other listeners understand what value you have received from tuning in today, please leave me an Apple podcast five star review. Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. To keep it going, connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter or join the inspiring, uplifting and positive Focus on Why Facebook group. All the links are in the show notes. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why.